How's everybody doing on Saturday? Made it to the weekend. Well, I've got this set for about the last three days. And you can just see all the quakes that have been happening in the last three days. Now, right over in here, in the Vanatau region, I counted them up. If I didn't miscount, I think they've had 18 earthquakes over the last few days. And even up here in the U.S., well, we're not big magnitude ones, but you can see plenty of them. And I'll go ahead and filter this magnitude out. And go ahead and bring her down to about level three. And you can still see that we, in the last few days, about the last three days, we've had some activity in the U.S. You have a 5-7 uh, over here in the, the Canada region. And then through here in the Tonga area, they're getting some uh, earthquakes also, 5-8 and a 4-8. And all through this whole area in the Philippines, and just extending up into uh, Japan, of course, even though the magnitude is not as high as what Vanatau had, uh, Japan is, you know, they're getting some action. You can see the magnitudes here. Five, six, five, four, four, eight, four, nine. Mainly fours into the fives. This is your most recent one over here. It just had a 5.3 not too long ago. We're going to take a look at the list here in a minute and go over everything. Let's go ahead and pop on over to that. You had a 5.3 in the Owen Fracture Zone region. California is having some lower magnitudes like what we looked at. Aleutian Islands. Andreoff Islands in Alaska, Aleutian Islands, 4.3. Here is your higher magnitude, 5.7, Canada region, Vancouver Island. Hello, Iran. We had a 4.8. You joined the party. 4.3 off the coast of Oregon, 5.4 in the Philippines, 4.7 in Afghanistan. 2.6 offshore Oregon, East Coast Honshu, Japan, 4.8, 5.1 in Central Mid Atlantic Ridge. There's your Vanatau, 5.2. The Volcano Islands in the Japan region, 4.6. Don't want to hear that word volcano. 5.6 Samar, Philippines, 3.0 Southern Texas. Here's your Utah, 3.7. Offshore in El Salvador, 4.3. 5.8 in Tonga. I used to live in Wyoming. In Casper for about a year, 2.8. And you have your Mongolia, Central Mongolia, 5.4. And the Taiwan region, a 5.1. These would all be on the fourth. fall back into the third and follow it right through there. You had a 4.7 in Afghanistan, the Rat Islands, Aleutian Islands, Alaska, 4.6, Southern Sumatra, Indonesia, 4.9, East Coast Honshu, Japan, 4.8, and then we get into the Vanatau series, 4.7, 4.8, Honshu, Japan, East Coast, 4.7, New Britain, Papua New Guinea, 4.51, Indonesia, Halmahera, 4.8, East Coast Honshu, Japan, 4.6, Vanatau, 4.9, Hawaii, 2.6. And then, of course, Vanatau got a red one, 6.0. So that's what the list says in each location. And that coincides with what we show on the Earthquake 3D, tied in with the USGS. Everything's showing to be rocking 
and pulsating and throbbing. So that area of the Ring of Fire over by Indonesia, uh, for some some reason, uh, Vanatau just it just went off. Uh, I'm sure there's been other areas that's been pounded by multiple earthquakes as we've seen in the past. There has been uh, how these areas are designated and they all of a sudden go off is up for debate. But you can plainly see what has been happening here, and I'll even filter it out some more. We'll just go with 5.0 earthquakes there. That would be like five pointers in the last three days. So you can still see uh, different points of the faults all around the world throb. And grind and crunch and break and move. Now that's a pretty, pretty good size one there up there in the Canada region. And then you remember I said they had a couple off in the Oregon way. So in our region, we'll need to keep an eye on that. There doesn't seem to be any five pointers coming and extending all the way through this line all the way down here right now. But of course, we know that they will because they have. Well, this one, this one over here, I've always thought this would be the area that would go completely to crap first that would lead into other larger earthquakes and maybe volcano eruptions and stuff and I'm still there's nothing that leads me to believe it won't be anywhere but here uh, even though we have our new Madrid and everything in America I, I still think this one would uh, aggravate others because they're all tied in like a big spider web, like a seam of a baseball. Some are just weaker than others. Now, maybe you uh, knew, maybe you didn't. This would be a little bit older of an article. But you're going to get you another earthquake drill. Remember like last May? And what I have to say about last May is we, we knew what we knew from the information that they put out about the earthquake shakeout drill and the activity planned all along the New Madrid seismic zone. We know about FEMA bought all the water, the food, the this, the that, the everything. So you can call that practice, you can call it whatever you want. <clears throat> you can go back to sleep and you can think the New Madrid is just fine and that you've got 500 more years of nothing to worry about. If that's what you choose to do, that's what you choose to do. But what I'm here to tell you is I'm not going back to sleep because I know better than that. I was telling you plainly on February the 7th, 1015, more than one million people across nine states are going to participate in the great central U.S. shakeout. Now, they're calling this, on different articles, they're calling it the second annual great central U.S. shakeout. Technically, that would be a correct description because the first one was in 11, now you're having this one in 12. So technically, they can use that word annual. But you know as well as I do, this will be the second one that they've had in nine months. It hasn't even been a year since they had the other one. It has not been a year since they had the other one. The other one was uh, late April into May, mid-May. This would be 
early February. I see a difference in climate and temperature. Uh, maybe they intended that because an earthquake will not pick and choose whether it's cold, hot, wet, or dry. Um, so they would probably say maybe that was part of their thinking in scheduling this event to occur on February the 7th. However, in hindsight being 2020, when I think back to the first one in May, and uh, New Madrid did not crack and break. Maybe it didn't, like I said before. But you got the flooding, didn't you? Talk to those people that lost everything they had in the flooding. Ask them if it wasn't a big deal for them. Those of you that weren't affected, that, uh, you know, think everything was a load of crap back then that you were getting ready. Well, go talk to someone that lost everything. Tell them if, you know, ask them to tell you if they think it was a load of crap. I think you'll get a different answer. So for me, I know they had the first ever that I know of, Great Central U.S. Shakeout, and six months later I experienced something in my home state in my town that I'd never experienced before being a 5.6 earthquake. So to me 2 plus 2 is 4. I don't care if it took 2 months, 8 months, 9 months, 10 months. There was a 5.6 earthquake after 6 months time when all this preparedness was going on. Maybe it wasn't New Madrid but it was in Oklahoma. So now, they're having another one. So as for me, I'm not jacking around. I'll be ready. Because I still have the bug out bag packed. I still have the bottle of water collected. I never stopped adding. I still have canned goods and dried goods. It's, it's a no brainer. I mean, just because an event didn't stay on a timetable doesn't mean you stop preparing for it and being safe. <clears throat> so, Central U.S. is not particularly known for its earthquakes, but emergency officials say it's important because it raises awareness and increases your preparedness. While rare, the Midwest has been subjected to several powerful quakes. On December 15th, 1811, a powerful quake struck southeastern Missouri. The tremors were so powerful, the church bells rang in Washington, D.C. In 1909, Indiana was struck by its most powerful quake. If those same earthquakes happened today, it could devastate Indiana especially the southwest corner. Well, I didn't see too much publicity for this little practice run here again. And you can see this is my own state's Oklahoma Office of Homeland Security. Your state, and your own local office will probably have notification just like this. And as you can see, they have also the same pretty much information right in here about this practice drill and this wasn't really publicized that I knew of in my paper but that's just the way it is huh? they're not going to tell you everything are they <clears throat> Apparently, some of these articles have been up at least a week. Let's look at this. We're talking about earthquake practice, so let's talk about New Madrid. Everyone really can understand. Earthquakes that occur in this seismic zone threaten parts of seven states. Mississippi, Tennessee, Kentucky, Arkansas, Missouri, Indiana, and Illinois. Mm -hmm. Now, 
I'm not far that far away from Missouri, so anytime that thing goes messing around, I'm throwing myself into that mix too because we're not that far away in the history of it. Said four of the largest North American quakes in, in history. Magnitudes estimated to be as large as eight, occurring within a three-month period between December 1811 and February 1812. <clears throat> Many of the published accounts describe the cumulative effects of all the earthquakes. first known written record of an earthquake felt in the seismic zone, New Madrid, was from a French missionary traveling up, a part, up the Mississippi with a party of explorers. 1 p.m. on Christmas Day, and this is your 200 year anniversary here, and it tells you right here, December 1811. Seven point two to eight point two, epicenter northeast Arkansas, slight damage. At New Madrid, trees were knocked down, river banks collapsed. Shook windows and furniture in Washington, DC, rang bells in Richmond, Virginia, sloshed well water and shook houses in Charleston, South Carolina. I have relatives that live down there. And knocked plaster off of houses in Columbia, South Carolina. I have relatives there. In Jefferson, Indiana, furniture moved, and in Lebanon, Ohio, residents fled their homes. Aftershocks were felt every six to ten minutes in the New Madrid until what was called the daylight shock, which was of the same intensity of the first. December 16th, 1811. January 23rd, 1812, well, that's a 200 year anniversary. Epicenter in the Missouri Boot Heel. February 7th, coming upon that, 1812, that'll be a 200 year anniversary. Epicenter near New Madrid, Missouri. New Madrid was destroyed. At St. Louis, Missouri, houses were damaged or chimneys were toppled. Earthquakes felt as far away as New York and Boston, Massachusetts. Hundreds of aftershocks followed over a period of years. Aftershocks strong enough to be felt occurred until the year 1817. The largest earthquakes to have occurred since then were on January 4, 1843 and October 31, 1895 with magnitudes estimates of 6.0 and 6.6 .6, respectively. Modern activity, and it just told you, was the 6.6 .6 was the most recent highest one. The next biggest quake was a 5.4 on November the 9th, 1968 near Dale, Illinois. And you can see some of the geolo excuse me, geology. Here's your potential for the future earthquakes. This would be a report filed in 2008 by FEMA. And they're warning that a serious quake could result in the highest economic loss due to natural disaster in the United States. Further predicting widespread and catastrophic damage across Alabama, Arkansas, Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Kentucky, Mississippi, Missouri, there we are, Oklahoma, Texas, and particularly Tennessee, where a 7.7 .7 magnitude Quake or greater would cause damage to tens of thousands of structures affecting water distribution, transportation, and vital infrastructure. The earthquake would be expected to result in many thousands of fatalities, with more than 4,000 expected in Memphis all alone. The potential for recurrence of large earthquakes and their impact on densely populated cities around the seismic zone generated much research 
in 2009. The team from the University of Illinois and Virginia Tech considered a scenario where all three segments of the fault ruptured at the same time. The report found that there would be significant damage in eight states studied, being these states here. The report estimated 86,000 casualties, 3,500 fatalities, 715,000 damaged buildings, 7.2 million people displaced, with 2 million of these seeking shelter. 2 million. Primarily due to lack of utility services. Direct economic losses would be at least 300 billion. There is uncertainty over the potential for recurrence. Now, there is not agreement between the great minds on if or when and exactly where it would begin and what the outcome would be. They have their thoughts. So you got a 200 year anniversary coming up on February the 7th. talking about nuclear plants built along seismic or the uh, fault lines well they've been reassessing some uh, plants so the Nuclear Regulatory Commission says uh, they have released an updated risk model that plant operators must use to recalculate their risk Exelon Energy, which operates Illinois' 11 nuclear reactors, believes it will take three to five years to complete studies for all of its plants before determining whether any need upgrades. But we would not expect to incur significant costs as a result. Mr. Marshall Murphy said the company's units are designed to withstand an earthquake of 6.0 to 6.9. Not sure if I believe that or not. Murphy said the plants are also built to withstand a variety of other significant natural events and constructed in a safe manner in which there are numerous, numerous redundant safety systems in place. Oh, here's a goodie. The Dresden Nuclear Power Plant, 65 miles southwest of Chicago. And next era's energies, Dwayne Arnold Energy Center, just north of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, are in areas where scientists believe that seismic risk is slightly greater than indicated by past data. Both of these plants use Mark I boiling water reactors, which are the same model as the Fukushima Daiichi plant that failed in Japan. A design that has been a concern to environmentalists and scientists in the country. David Lockbaum, the director of the Nuclear Safety Project for the Union of Concerned Scientists, said spent fuel rods at those plants are stored above and outside the reactor containment chamber instead of at ground level and systems used to cool the rods were not built to withstand earthquakes. Systems used to cool the rods were not built to withstand earthquakes. He said the assumption when the plants were built was that the rods would be shipped off, off site, for burial. But that didn't happen after a U.S. plan to bury the spent rods in Nevada's Yucca Mountain was stalled. You know who stalled it? the Democrats and Obama and Harry Reid. <clears throat> I believe if memory serves me correct, Bush uh, was the last president that spent a lot of money doing the Yucca Mountain thing and getting it ready to store the waste there. And we had a change of administration and a change in Congress and whatnot and they put the brakes on it so that is why the plan to bury the rods has stalled 
Harry Reid did not want it in Nevada. If the storage area or piping were to rupture, it would be more difficult to keep the rods covered with water. Well, we already know that from Japan, so we know what that would, would be if there was a situation there. Russellville, Arkansas. A spokesman there said, That plant was designed and built to withstand the largest earthquake historically reported in the area, plus a margin of safety. Well, I don't think that makes the people of Arkansas feel any better to know that it was designed to withstand the largest historically reported earthquake in the area. Our design is pretty solid. We feel like we're safe today and we'll be safe tomorrow. In Kansas, spokesman for Wolf Creek Nuclear Plant said it's unclear if there will be a change in risk for Wolf Creek, 90 miles southwest of Kansas City. Wolf Creek, she said, is designed to withstand an earthquake equivalent to the maximum potential earthquake in the region. That's a nice standard response, isn't it? Well, I guess that's why they get paid the big bucks, to tell the same thing that somebody else somewhere has already said about their facility. Scott Bond, manager of nuclear development for Ameren, Missouri, also did not expect major changes in risk for the company's Callaway plant in central Missouri. The AP reported in September that the NRC believed a fourth of America's reactors might need modifications to make them safer in the event of an earthquake. The report, based on a preliminary analysis of government data, came after the largest earthquake to hit Virginia in 117 years appeared to exceed what the North Anna nuclear power plant was built to sustain. Uh, I think they said they're not going to lose any sleep over it. We have backup uh, generators. And then I believe at that time some of the generators failed. No. Oh. The plant northwest of Richmond was shut down for three months after the 23rd of August quake caused peak ground movement about twice the level for which the plant was designed. So there we go. You got your great shakeout going on again. You know the history of the New Madrid. You know it's come up on 200 years. So keep an eye open and be aware. If you don't feel like stocking up on nothing and you feel like nothing's going to happen, then hey, do your thing and don't do it. But if you think you should prepare and have yourself a plan, which is a smart thing to do, then, uh, you know, I'm with you because I keep adding little by little by little to what my stockpile is. Odds are odds and you only beat the odds for so long and then the odds win. So the odds are sooner or later it's gonna break. Like I said i would never been alive before where we had a 5.6 earthquake. You see all kinds of activity you know, already through Mexico, you know, all the way down the line, through Mexico, all the way down here, uh, Central America, all the way into Chile, Argentina, all over the place, all the way down the line. You see it right in here, and then you got this all up in here. So it's only a matter of time. And you know what year it is. You know what they say, the things that might happen in 2012. And so far it looks like they're right on schedule to me. It looks like the war game is being prepped. I don't believe anything's going to happen immediately right now. I think what we're seeing right now is just huffing and puffing and smoke and thumping and beating of chest. 
But I do believe that but while they're doing this, they're positioning things for future event. Now we just had a fireball flew over that a lot of people saw. Now that was not 433 Eros, of course. 433 Eros was was way out there. So I am not sure what piece of uh, fireball this was. I don't know that it had a name. I haven't heard that it was named. Uh, we had some people at work said they thought they heard that it uh, landed in Texas. I don't. I haven't found anything that led me to believe that. I actually haven't found yet where they said it landed. I'm hoping it went in the water. But you know we have things to come from above too. Things that are written must pass and fulfill. You can't go to the next checkpoint unless the other one's already happened. And we're plodding along here just like normal. Just like usual. What do we see in American politics? We see a billionaire backing another billionaire, don't we? Uh, the comb over master who should shave his head bald instead of that disgusting comb over hairdo of his has graced us with his goodness to allow us to know that he has endorsed Mitt the billionaire Romney. <clears throat> Doesn't that make everybody feel much better? So if it worked out you'd have a billionaire endorsed by another golden spoon running against a socialist uh, and any other name that would fit him that can describe him backed by one of our favorite people that we hate that we love to hate George Soros you know he's involved in all kinds of dirty things around the world my personal opinion is it's all set up for Obama to continue it's just a little play out on the world stage. I don't see us changing over to Mitt Romney. Why? Think back to how many presidents we've actually had that, that served two terms since 1980. Memory serves me correctly, we only had one president that served one term. And that would be Daddy Bush. Have you seen Reagan get two terms? You've seen Clinton get two terms. You've seen Daddy Bush's son, Bush Jr., get two terms. Obama's running for a second term. Bush and Obama and Cheney are related, also related to the Queen of England. So I don't believe you're going to see a changeover. You have seen 92 to 2008 years. 2000 to 2008, eight years, and they've got it all planned for 2008 to 2016. So you will have three presidents in a 24 year span, and that is, it is what it is. It's an American style monarchy dictatorship. And at least two of those presidents are related, the Bushes and the Obamas. That's not up for debate anymore. It has been admitted. You know, Obama's on record about his relationship to Cheney. <clears throat> so, the world continues to turn with all its problems and earthquakes and wars and diseases and famines thank everyone for the prayers for my nephews. Andrew has taken his uh, chemo and radiation in California and they appear to be having some success with his tumor getting a little bit smaller. Uh, my brother's treatment a couple of years ago they have done all they can for him and uh, the survival rate for his type was listed at five years so he's got about three years, hopefully. 
then nothing will happen after that but by the data he would have three left on his five Matt here in town does not look to be doing good but that doesn't mean things can't turn around so I appreciate all the prayers and I have told him he's got people praying for him all over the world that he doesn't even know and everybody's trying to give the best supernatural help that they can people all over the world hungry dying from whatever way murder disease but all over the world people are hurting so we should pray for everyone also besides those that we know. A lot of people don't have anybody, nobody at all. And so commonly most people don't think about that. And the people that don't have anybody to pray for them, well, they really need our prayers. So that's what I wanted to show you is about the seismic situation, the great shakeout, the problems with the nuclear reactors which are built along all the fault lines and those that aren't directly on a fault line have been constructed to where they will not withstand sizable earthquakes which would lead to American version of Fukushima but let's hope we can put this off for as long as we can I've been kind of long-winded here, but I wanted to make sure I got everything in. Uh, it's kind of a cold, damp, drabby day here. I'm going to let everybody go, and I'm going to prowl around and see what I can find. Uh, I'm going to see if I can find where that meteor hit. And if I do, I'll go ahead and put something out for you and give you a little more information about that if I can find it. So y'all have a good weekend, and be safe and careful in whatever it is that you do. And my, my prayers are with each and every one of you, you're all special friends. God bless you, and enjoy the rest of the weekend. If you watch the Super Bowl, whoever you're pulling for, I hope your team wins. My team is out. So, I don't have a vested interest in the game. Goodbye, and keep looking up.